Right, today I'm gonna talk about this funny looking device here. But first, let me update with you on what I've been working on. So these are the laptop batteries I've been working on. Been uh, pulling them out and uh, salvage them. Got a whole box in here. And these are the ones uh, tested. And one more box here. The problem with these laptop batteries is that they are really old. They're about 10 to 15 years old and most of them are very discharged and I have quite a few of them that are dead. So when I pull the cells out, they're usually very low voltage between zero and one volt. So in the past, what I usually did is I just take a good cell and do a parallel charging with a discharge cell. Are you ready for an explosion? 5 amp. And then when the voltage is high enough, I put it in a charger and it should charge just fine. And that has been working great for me so far. And I've been able to salvage like hundreds of these. But the problem with this method is that I can only do one cell at a time. And every time I do it, it takes about 20 seconds, sometimes 30 seconds. So if I have a lot of these to salvage from, um, it's going to take quite a while. So imagine it takes 30 seconds to raise voltage one cell or six cell in each battery. And that's three minutes for each battery. Problem is I got a lot more to work on. So it's going to take a lot of time just for that. So that's why I made this contraption here. So this is just a couple of 18650 holders. And they come in pack of fours. They're not connected. So I have to store the wires in the back here and uh, put them in parallel. So all the cells here are in parallel. And then I put a uh, connector, XT60 connector, so I can connect to another battery. So the way this works is I can raise the voltage of eight cells at the same time. And what I use is a USB power bank. So this is a wrap power USB power bank. But inside here, there are five 18650 cells, and they are in 1S5P configuration, so the output is also 4.2 volts. So I just saw the, a couple of wires coming out here with my XD60 connector. So what comes out here is 4.2 volts. So what I do is I just connect this to here. Now I have the input of 4.2 volts. And then I put my eight cells with low voltage in here to raise the voltage and do eight cells all at the same time. That will save me a lot of time. If you don't have something like this, it's very easy to do anyway, but if you don't have something like this, you can use a high discharge cell. So this one is capable of putting out between 15 to 20 amp. In order to charge eight cells at the same time, you will need to have a battery input that has a high current output like this one here or this one here let's put this to the test here so we have got eight cells with very low voltage or under one volt and if I put them to my um, charger here it's not gonna be recognized by the charger the light stay green Try a couple more. Not taking a charge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my USB power bank here and plug it in on this side. Okay. Also have my amp meter here, show you how many amps going through the battery. Let's give it a try here. I'm gonna do one single cell at a time. Okay. Started around about five or six amp and uh, it's reducing. Okay, so I'm just gonna do one cell at a time. Okay. You see every time I put in a cell the current increase 
like a spike and then it quickly uh, reduces. Same here. So by doing this, I can parallel charge eight cells at the same time and boost the voltage all of them up all at the same time. Right? Now let's check on the voltage. Let's see what we got here. Three point something volts. 3.7 volts. Not an accurate way to check it because probably from this, but uh, the battery's voltage now should be high enough. Usually, it takes me about 20 to 30 seconds. So, by the time I finish putting the last battery, the first battery should be ready. So, let's check it right now. Three volts. See that? So it should be, there you go, should be good to charge right now. You can see here, I got seven cells left, and the current is less than seven amp. So each cell is taking less than one amp right now. So that's a good thing, not be too much uh, current. Try the rest. That's good. And let's first check on the voltage first. Over 3 volts, so should be good. There you go. Let's try a couple more. Over 3 volts. Good. Okay, that's good. That's good. Let's try the last three. Well, this one is a bit uh, stubborn. But these two are good. And see if we can charge. There we go. There we go. Let's try and see if this uh, is going to charge. It's not charging. So I'm going to put in a little bit more. You can see here the current is not increasing. So the cell is not taking in any, any charge. Let's check on the voltage of this one here. 0.8 volts and it's not charging so let's try and put it in here I'm gonna re-zero my uh, amp meter here you can see that it's not taking in any charge and uh, there's no current going through the battery even though it's plugged in right now so this cell is probably dead, cannot be revived anymore. There we go, that's completely dead. So this is also one way to determine a bad cell among the good cells. So that's basically the way I parallel charge eight cells at the same time. So I just do one at a time until I get to eight. And by the time I get to eight, the first one is ready to go. But I can also do all eight, all at once. So I already unplugged this. Now let me show you how, what happened. When I put in all at once and then I plug this in. There's going to be a lot of current flowing through all at once as soon as you plug in the cable. 9 amp and then it's quickly reducing so before when it's stable it's less than 1 amp each right so around uh, 7 or 8 amp 
uh, it started at 9 but it's quickly reduced. The disadvantage of doing it this way is that the in rush current is going to be a little bit high so when you first plug it in the current spike is going to be a lot instead of doing one cell at a time you don't have a very high spike of current so that's why i prefer doing one at a time plug this in first and doing one at a time until it reach all the way to the end that way the current increase is going to be gradual instead of like a big spike at the beginning i got another cell to be revived and this cell is pretty low 1.2 volts so let's charge it a little bit here and then let's see if we can raise the voltage three volts just a few seconds so should be good now there we go so as you can see when you put in a low voltage cell that is still good the current is going to increase as soon as you put in the cell so you see here 3.5 amp right 5 amp so that's also one way to determine if the cell is still good or bad and let me try and put this in here again I'll show you what happens when you put it in absolutely nothing happens so this cell is bad and this cell is good and besides using this contraption for charging low voltage cell I can use this for many other things because right now this is a power bank of 1S8P right? it's a battery pack by itself I can use this for anything that runs on 4 volts I can use this to charge a another low voltage cell and finally I can also use this to charge eight cells at the same time so I got a TP456 board here and all I have to do now is to plug this in here like so and the other end of a USB I'm gonna plug it in a any USB source so here's my solar charge controller got a couple of USB ports so I'm just gonna plug it in here like so now see a red light it is charging eight batteries at the same time and of course it's gonna take a long time to charge all eight cells so I'm just gonna plug in like around dinner time by the time I wake up in the morning uh, they should be done let's see the rate of charge here exactly one amp and by the way as you can see this is my new spot welding machine I'm trying to use this to make my new e-bike battery uh, instead of soldering. I'm also going to make a review of this product and it's going to be my next video. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.